All right, this was fun, but this fish has been on for two hours. It's getting dark. I can forget my dinner plans at this point. The temperature is dropping into the 30s. I wasn't expecting to be out here. I'm not sure how much this camera is picking up, but I'm in a kayak in the middle of a lake. I've been fighting a fish for two and a half hours. Didn't think I'd be out here after dark. I don't have any lights with me, and there is a tugboat coming directly this way. If I had to bet who's going to win this fight with the fish, smart money is on the fish. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Todd from Your Fishing Adventure, and that was a narrow miss. I came within five feet of getting hit by that tugboat. But the key thing is, I learned a lot from that. I always bring adequate lighting, even when I don't expect to be out after night. But this raises some questions. Why do we love fishing so much? And why do guys post so many pictures of fish on dating sites? We're going to answer those questions, and I'm also going to show you what happened with that fish after fighting it for three hours. So why do we love fishing so much? And why do we engage in behavior that others look at and think, why are they doing that? Not every creature on the planet loves fishing the way we do. Some are actually a little freaked out by it. It wasn't always about just getting out onto the water and feeling present and getting away from work, which is really important. But fishing was a way of sustaining ourselves. Our ability with language and capacity for abstract thought evolved 150,000 years ago. Yet we lived in 50 member tribal societies until only about 7,000 years ago. So who we are, our DNA was created for tribal living. We are so used to 50 member societies. Think about the fear of public speaking to a group of 50 people. If you said the wrong thing to the tribe, you were saying the wrong thing to everyone who has ever known you and everyone who will ever know you. The things you do in a tribal society have consequences, some bad, some really good. If you catch a fish and provide, it not only connects you with nature, it also establishes your status in the community. We don't have to fish for sustenance anymore. We go to our jobs, we get our pay, and we use that. We don't have to catch fish for a living, but in some places in the world, people do. The town of Kajima in Cuba is still a fishing village, and it was made popular and famous by the Ernest Hemingway novel, Old Man and the Sea. The story is set in the 1950s, and it's about an old man, Santiago, who's gone 84 days without catching a fish. It costs him almost everything. He's unable to feed himself, he loses his status in the society, people are laughing at him, and the story is about him reconnecting with nature and going out and trying to catch that one big fish. And he does catch that big fish, the biggest ever. Does he land it? It almost doesn't matter. The story is actually available for free on YouTube and you can have it read to you by Charlton Heston. I actually listened to that two and a half hour audio presentation on YouTube on my trip down to North Carolina when I had that fish on for three hours. He was an old man who fished alone in his skiff in the Gulf Stream. So as I'm catching the fish, I actually had lines from that story going through my mind. And I'll put a link to that story where you can see it on YouTube for free. I'll go ahead now and show the actual fight of that fish, edit it down quite a bit. Now we've in quotes from the story to show you what I was thinking and to show you how that story is still relevant today and how you don't have to live in a fishing village to have that kind of an epic battle. All right, it's been a slow day. I'm about to wrap up. Not much content for this episode at Lake Norman. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here, but I saw a few seagulls over here, so I'm going to do a few casts. Oh, fish on. What is this? It feels like a cannonball. It's, it's a snag? No. That is definitely not a snag. All right, buddy, tire yourself out. This thing is not moving. What are you? After all this time, its tail is just swimming gently. It's like it's just not even beginning to be tired out, and this is 50 minutes into the fight. So this is an hour and 15 minutes into the fight of this fish, and it is not budging at all. Its tail is just swimming like it's casually swimming after all this time, so I'm really curious to see what this thing is. I think this might be a really big catfish because I can start to feel it rolling. This is uh, an interesting challenge. The wind is picking up and it's blowing towards the center of the lake, but this fish fortunately doesn't want to go towards the center of the lake. 
I really hope this ends well after all this. But you just never know, the line can break, the hook can snap. Every decent sized lake has at least one fish that can overcome your equipment. But that's what makes it exciting is you just never know. Okay, so it's starting to get dark. I can see my breath. Hands are starting to cramp up. This glove is definitely helping. Wind is picking up, blowing me away from shore towards the lake, but fortunately, this fish doesn't want to go towards the center of the lake, so I'm thankful for that. But this is about, oh, about an hour and uh, 45 minutes into this. Well, I just fought that fish for three hours and the line broke. So I never actually saw the fish. Ah, oh, so frustrating, fun, but I really want to know what that fish was. So it's time to uh, paddle back towards the, towards the boat launch. Uh, it's like a, it's almost a mile away at this point. Don't get me wrong, I'm thankful I did not get hit by that tugboat and I learned an important lesson to always bring lighting even when you don't plan to be out after dark. I'm exhausted. My arms are sore but I'm sure I'll be fine tomorrow and I'm going to start another day with fishing first thing in the morning. Thank you.